Australia's economy has grown by just 0.1% in the first three months of the year. The new GDP figures show that's the lowest quarterly figure since December of 2020. Let's go to the independent analyst now, Evan Lucas. Evan, good to see you. So the claim's been made that we are teetering on the edge of recession here. Do you back that up? I do. I mean, if you look at it on a per capita basis, which is basically, you know, reviewing the household for the fifth quarter in a row, we have contracted year on year per capita GDP down 1.3%. And that all came out to bear in, in yesterday's numbers because without migration, without the demand that it creates, it would have been a negative number. The other thing to highlight there, Pete, was inventories were well and truly above expectation. Now, that helped GDP, but there's a counter-argument to that. If we've got high levels of inventory, it means business can't shift it. So that's the other part of that that sort of probably hides the overall data inside of it. And all of what you saw from the data yesterday is what you would expect under the current conditions, which is that we do have high rates, we have high inflation, and we at the moment are only being propped up basically by government spending and the migration numbers that we have. OK, so, I mean, you'd have to think with all of that said, Evan, that another rate rise would kill the economy, would it not? Uh, possibly. Again, though, the issue with the economy and what we saw in other parts of the numbers where they revised up the end of last year's numbers is that we are still spending in areas that we could probably do without. So travel was a massive yeah. overspend at the end of last year. So we still have excess demand, as the RBAs were pointing out, in the economy for things that probably normally we would try and see a close down on. So inflation is still there. And not only that, for the last three months consecutively, it's yeah. actually ticked up. And, and that is their biggest concern. It's interesting you, you can't say that. Go away from it. Yeah, sorry, Evan. Yeah, interesting you say that on travel. I mean, we're about to hit the European summer season where everybody jets off to Europe. So you'd have yep. to think with a few more bucks in your pocket from July 1, that spending is going to continue. Yeah, and then the other thing that's going on right now is that despite what we talk about with you and me about where the Aussie dollar sits at 66 and a half US cents to the Aussie dollar, against other currencies, the Aussie is one of, if not the best performing currency in the G10. So if you look at it against the euro, you look at it against the pound, you look at it particularly against the yen, the attractiveness of overseas travel to those destinations, but also the attractiveness of those products coming into our country keeps spending up because they appear cheap to us here in Australia. And that's, I think, also been lost in this debate, particularly Japanese exports. They are incredibly cheap. So if you look at things like brown goods, white goods, they are actually seeing a reasonable amount of sales. Most of them come out of Japan because the yen is so cheap. So all of that filters into that debate that we're having here is that inflation is holding at around 3.5%. And as I said, for the last three months, it's actually ticked up. It's sitting at 36 So the data to watch around your interest rate question is okay. next month's numbers and whether or not it holds or goes up again. Okay. Evan Lucas, appreciate that. Thank you.